Yeah. So as we've been, uh, First Friday has been looking for a, a theater mm -hmm. event, and with them starting to do something, <laughs> uh, with them starting to want a presence, uh -huh. it was sort of a, well, Hair is a great outdoor show, right. and a show that everybody loves, and it is more than just, a, it's a rock audience, a multi-generational audience, a theater audience, you get a little bit of everything. Right, right. So what better way to harbinger the arrival of Broadway yeah. Cares doing shows mm -hmm. here than something like Hair? Well, um, and First Friday is, is a staple of Las Vegas now, and, mm -hmm. and people people recognize that as something that they can look forward to every month, and and and, and people kind of embrace have embraced that in a very and it's very an big artsy way. Crowd, I think. Well, it, yeah, I was going to say it's, it's a welcoming crowd. Yeah. Totally. Now, Carrie Ann, let's talk about that because Carrie Ann's in here. Yeah. So this is actually it's so funny because when Glenn and I are talking, she's like, "Yeah, I've never seen that, and I'm not a part of that, so I don't know." <laughs> now, now it's my turn. Yeah. So now she can actually talk about it a little bit. Uh, how has it How has it been? Now, this is a for those of you who don't know hair, it's it's a very uh, period piece. It has to do with uh, the 60s and the draft the and all. 80s, yeah. Yeah, and Vietnam. for for you, I would argue that you're as free spirit as my friends get. And you are as loving and embracing as a free spirit can be. So for you, how is the how has this been? Has this been kind of like sitting in a warm bath? Actually, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta say, the the cast is really friendly with each other. You know, we're we're all good buddies. Mm -hmm. And so for this show, the ensemble is a tribe, and we are you know like not a coven, but like a group of hippies. We're a we're a solid group. Mm. And so cult. that's been a yeah, cult. Yeah, yeah. We're a cult. <laughs> yes. Drink the fruit punch. <laughs> <laughs> but what's been different about this is that the the rehearsals are twice a week. And in my experience doing musicals, mm -hmm. you know, it's like every single day for <laughs> two to three months, and then the show runs an entire month. And mm -hmm. so for me, it's been a whirlwind. Mm -hmm. And so learning all of the music, all these crazy lyrics, and the harmonies are super tight. Kind of like what you were talking about with your friend Elizabeth out at the Grand Canyon right now. She's she's getting all these changes every other day, and she's yep. being thrown into these. <laughs> and she's not doing it as often as she did, you know? So right, it's like, it's right. different. It's a different and, you schedule. Know, and you have to take a real responsibility for it, too. Yeah. You know, that this... This is my tribe, and I'm part of this just as much as every other member, and so I got. Well, that's kind of it. interesting. Ownership. <laughs> <laughs> Take okay. responsibility for your role. That's great. What are what are some uh, now doing a, a show like here? Um, what would you say is the central goal of the message behind the show? Because. You can take whatever you want away from it. It's a show about hippies. It's about free love. It's about you know standing firm in your in your beliefs. It's about the political statement and soapbox about the war. It's about you can take many things away from it. What's your goal in, in doing the show? What would you say is the the goal? Yeah, um, Andy. Well, <laughs> first of all, to, to to prepare audiences for what they're going to see with this. This is not like going into the theater and seeing hair in the world, and I want to sit and watch the world of hair. Right. This is like you're going to go to Woodstock. So we're going to transport you back and <laughs> cool. see a. A, and we cut it to 90 minutes, and it is a retro rock concert that tells the story of this group of friends that are facing the realization of the draft will get you. You're, and um, what is important and what to believe in. Like Claude is someone who really doesn't, he's, he's lost, doesn't know what to believe in. But um, it is, it, it, it's done with, we have just an amazing band, and it is going to be done very rough. If you've seen when the Who does Tommy, not Tommy the Broadway show, but like when the Who does Tommy or Quadrophenia, mm -hmm. they do tell their story, but there is no misconceived notion this is a rock concert. This is just there to rock. I'm, tr I'm trying to like watch my mouth on the radio, but yeah. every <laughs> adjective I have to describe to this show, I cannot say yeah. in there. Um, <laughs> but, and, and can I say um, that this is one of those musicals that people love to do because it's such a empowering piece. I mean, even if you're not a hippie, per se, or even if you don't have those strong connections to that period or the, the, the kind of the, the stand people took during that time or whatever, mm -hmm. you can identify with it because, you know, wanting to take a stand for something or, or finding yourself all of, all of a sudden a part of an ensemble that has the same feelings as you do, something like that, that's something we all identify with. Yeah, and this is a big, that she, she hit it on the head, like, this, this show is the unity and the love for each other. And you mm -hmm. can't fake it, and we right. were blessed. Like, the, the, um, the ensemble itself clicked, they got, they got along, and our, our principal tribe is a um, remarkably talented group. Absolutely I mean, awesome. But they, yeah, they're <laughs> so good, but they also, a lot of them know each other, and the ones who don't know each other are like, they fit in so perfectly within five minutes, it's like they've known each other for ten years. Cool. Mm -hmm. And it's, you can't, I don't care how good of an actor you are, there's an element uh, that you just can't match if that if it's not there. And it's 
Um, so our burger and Claude mm -hmm. have known each other for years, and they um, they are burger and Claude in <laughs> like, like in life without without the extensive drug use. Um, they're <laughs> that cannot be confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> but they're like they have that where the the burger is always uh, busting. Uh, well, it's, it's Dustin and, and Brandon, and Dustin mm -hmm. is constantly busting Brandon's chops. In wait, life. wait, wait, and burger? Yeah. Is Dustin? Yeah. Oh, that name's mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> she just like, Jamie, wait, Claude dies? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was me too. He dies. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yes. Well, that does count for the, as somebody that has never seen the show before, or is unfamiliar with the music and everything. Um, it, does it does it draw on stereotypes of the of the time, or do, or they kind of flesh out um, realizations that they aren't stereotypes? Yeah. Oh, this yeah. this is they are, um, uh, you know, this is sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Right. This show right. they are drugged out the whole time, and it's not <laughs> we don't with it being at first Friday, and then actually it should be noted Saturday the eighteenth in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, we're gonna have a big. Love Fest at the Hard Rock on the Strip that there's a performance then cool. you can go to also, uh, so it's in the air conditioning. If you so <laughs> it's mainly aimed because of so many of the shows are performing Friday night. Right. They can't be there. Um, so oh, a lot wow. of the, the the industry and performers will be there on the Saturday afternoon. Cool. Um, and we want people to come dressed in retro, uh, have you know, have fun, be part Far of the sixties. But yes. yeah, but it's um, remind me when the dates are for hair and then we'll Friday the seventh at first Friday at six and nine. And so you have the big outdoor rock experience like you would have in the 60s. And then on Saturday the 7th, uh, or Saturday the 8th, excuse me, mm -hmm. it's at the Hard Rock on the Strip, which where else would you do want to do a rock opera than at the Hard Rock? Yeah. Uh, and it's all of, they have all their vintage crap around. Right. So you're immersed in that culture when so you're So like going to rock. First Friday, would you just get the tickets there because you go to First Friday? Uh, first Friday, no, it's free. You just go and hang out. And it's, that's the other part of with it being hair is it's all about the freedom and the love and making mm -hmm. donations to, you know, we're collecting donations and getting sponsors for Broadway Cares, but this is about sharing and, and loving each other and community. And yeah. people who have gone to First Friday before, um, this is this is definitely a special event during that time. So so make sure that you get out to First Friday, that, uh, that's the 7th. Um, for those of you who've never been to First Friday, it's, it's one of those... Um, times every month that you need to look forward to because it's a coming together of like-minded artistic people mm -hmm. and and they kind of uh you know they you can find things that you can buy there there are performances going on there's food there's entertainment there's free hugs there's all kinds of crazy stuff i'll be giving them out yeah and, and interact. they're yeah the press out the whole time right and, out and, and about in in interacting so they're going to be oh, like wow. walking around with uh, marching signs and gathering people and bringing them in and it's thousands so there's an of element people. of improv to this too absolutely so. yeah they're, they're, so we're bringing in people who can't sing at all yeah. that are going to just be like elemental hippies out in about first Friday that's awesome um, but it should be I have to note to your audience this is not a family friendly show sure like we, we do the whole spectrum with with, mm -hmm. with things and but this is like on a pilot, like we don't hint at sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Like yeah. they will be doing drugs mm -hmm. on stage. Well, not literally doing the drugs, but yeah, you, it's, you, it's, you, it's, you, it's, yeah. it's theater. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's I'm acting, but it's guys. not like they well, don't refer to them. They do so. Don't bring your ten year old to right. go see hair. It is a vulgar show, and we don't pull punches because that's right. not what the show's about. Well, and can I just say for the record that Hair is a celebrated musical. It was it was first on the scene in the sixties. It came. It was very well received because it was a time of change for Broadway, even, yeah. and and everybody seemed to really, really attach to this piece, and it kind of started a new dawn of the type of musical people were putting out. Mm -hmm. um, the Two Gentlemen of Verona, um, you know, uh, Godspell, all these, all these things kind of followed on the heels of this kind of revolutionary, new, groundbreaking type of show, yes. and so, and it's been revived on Broadway several times. It's, it's, it's kind of one of those shows. I remember in Michigan going and seeing it at the Barn Theater. Um, starring Tom Wolpat, and <laughs> now, here, awesome. now here's the thing: the biggest, the biggest controversy was is that they were in in the original one. Now, I don't, I don't know if I, I don't want to even ask. I'll leave it up to the imagination in the, whether or not you're going to do this. But there's an option to do a nude scene. So the big thing was at the Barn Theater: are they going to do the nude scene? And so these these very blue-haired theater patrons who have season tickets are going, oh. And so they totally, the whole show, made fun of the fact that, oh, there's a nude scene. Oh, there's a nude scene. Oh, well, we're building you up. <laughs> Got to kind of callous you guys over for the nude scene. And then when they did do the nude scene, they did it with puppets. And it was like the most ridiculous thing, and everybody laughed. And it was hilarious. <laughs> but it was kind of, um, it, it's one of those things that is 
kind of malleable to the point, kind of like Suzical, if you think about it, it's malleable to the point to where you can kind of shape shift it to what you want it to be based on the venue and the audience, the demographic of the audience that you're hoping to target. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, um, this being in a First Friday setting, kind of open, uh, who, Tommy, concert style, you know, it's, I think it's very appropriate and very, in, in, and if you haven't seen it, you're going to go see a really fun show in a really fun venue, but it is a classical piece of theater. It's something that has been tried and true, and people have celebrated and loved for years and years to come, and, and, it's, and it's part of uh, um, what we know and celebrate in America. So you Definitely. gotta, And it's for a great cause, so bring a $50 bill and shove it in their cap, too, so that'd be nice. <laughs> and, you know, I would like to add as well, like, it's about the sex, drugs, and rock and roll, definitely, but through this journey, I have related very much to the whole, you know, how dare they try to take away this beauty. We we are a, a group of friends and we are standing for something. And we are against this war. It, we're all about peace and love. And that has really stood out for me personally mm -hmm. throughout this. So, so yeah, it's sex, drugs, and rock and roll. But it's, it's also freedom and love. And well, and can I, ju can I just say something? As far as if, if, if you K-Shop listeners are listening out there and you're like, well, we're not going to go see that. They said they'd simulate drug use on stage. Oh, burr, burr, burr. Well, here's the thing. First of all, turn on the television. <laughs> I mean, where isn't there a show that has... I mean, it's it's the reality. It's reality. Well, that was the 60s. In the 60s. It was. <laughs> that, I mean, and we're yeah. not talking about, like... And, and it is theater, folks. Okay, this is theater. <laughs> okay, these are actors, singers, dancers. They're performing, okay? And, and, it, and they are telling a story, a very poignant story, about that time. So um, it is theater. It's, it's not just performance art and a bunch of people dressing in blue hitting drums. It's, it's, it's something very, very tangible that you can kind of lash right. your thoughts around. And so. I'm going to get nude for this. And she's going to get <laughs> nude for Completely this. Completely nude under my clothes. <laughs> so get ready. Under Woo! So anyways, if you're just now tuning in, we're talking about nudity. Um, we're, here, <laughs> we're here with Andrew Wright from uh, Ragtag Entertainment and, and, and Ben Lowy, who's for, with Ragtag doing Suzical the Musical. And for Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS, they're um, turning the corner and looking forward to um, offering Hair, the musical that has been celebrated for years and years, just came off Broadway through a revival, and now we're doing it at first Friday, September 7th. Uh, on two, your calendar. There's two shows, one at 6 p.m. and one at 9 p.m. And here's the cool part about it. It's free. All you got to do is show up and uh, kind of be a part of uh, this kind of world they're going to create out at First Friday. It's not just a theater uh, performance. It's a kind of a theatrical event. It's, a, it's a, an experience. And it's an experience. It's an inclusion. You will feel part of the show because I will hug you. <laughs> you yeah. Oh, look, they, we uh, want you to sing along. Like, get listen to the soundtrack, be familiar. Like, that's yeah. the one good thing is when we went last First Friday, um, <laughs> they almost got got arrested, actually. Uh, they were going around handing out, so like you would yeah. back then, to, like, say, hey, come to this rally. They made little, like, not the actual theater postcards, but, like, rally-type cards. Yeah. Um, and the cops kept, like, running, and they had to, like, run, go from the cops, and the cops almost arrested. Art imitating um, life. Yeah, so, it, um, exactly like the but is. the people all... No, like a lot of that, the generation, uh, but one above ours, they were just a bust down song and they knew it. So yeah. we want it to be like in that concert setting. Start if you know Aquarius, sing Aquarius. If you know mm -hmm. any of these, if you know B in, and everybody you knows, start everybody knows, knows it. You just don't know it. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's funny too because uh, it's like Billy Joel songs. You don't really realize that that Billy Joel wrote it. He wrote a million songs. You don't realize, Barry Manilow, you don't realize he wrote that commercial jingle until you know, you hear it, and you're like, oh yeah, I know that. But uh, how do you get on Barry Manilow? Um, okay, well, we're going to take another quick break. We're going to come right back. You're listening to Curtain Call with Eric Ball, and we're going to talk a little bit more about hair and Susical and, and Susical with hair and hair hairsicle. Hair things like that. <laughs> Ken, the hat's going to get naked. Yeah, we're going to do something. Like awesome. That. So, hey, hang tight. <laughs> There's no books. He doesn't read it. So I'll, I'll, I'll kind of turn it over to you and I'll let you open up whatever you want to talk okay. about and we'll go from there. And we'll, you know, we'll bring it and kind of come to a conclusion and talk a little bit that more. That blew my mind when I read that he was hanging it up to get on stage. Like, Who? McKee? Oh, yeah. Man, oh, that takes a goodness. set that few people have, man. What, to be in Hamlet? No, for him to, to leave after 
bashing people like publicly, like he did it for a living, to yeah. then say, okay, now it's my turn. I got bashed by Mickey. Like that's you got bashed by Mickey. It doesn't. But not everybody trusts, did. Trust that the people who get bashed understand that it's yeah. Good. But not everybody does. Yeah. Oh yeah. Did he? Oh, he was right though. So I was like, yeah, okay, you noticed. But he, yeah, yeah, it's like, interesting that he's. It's it's that, that's a sack, man. Good for him. Good. <laughs> Well, what happens if he gets cast right away in Hamlet? You know what I mean? So, you know, I power mean, tone. we'll see what happens. It's not a, that's not an easy show to get cast in. That's all there's to it. It's a hard. That's that's taking on lots of homework right there. Talk about an owing obligation to a preconceived notion. Oof. Are you timing us? No. <laughs> It's like a hypnotizer or something. She's counting how many calories are because of me and the candy I keep feeding the child. <laughs> Which is going to be awesome when we leave here and it's bedtime, by the way. I'm sorry. You're like, thank you. Oh, for that. He gave her three handles of candy before <laughs> we even came out. So don't even, it's not at all your fault. And here I was like, I know my name's Ava. I have done this in my teapot for her, so that's perfect. <laughs> I'm bringing carrot sticks next time, Ava. I'm bringing chocolate covered mm -hmm. carrot sticks. Mm -hmm. Do you like to eat carrots? They're mm -hmm. very crunchy. I like to crunch uh, carrots. crunchy. Mm -hmm. You know, I was on a carrot cake for a while. I couldn't get enough of them. I'm carrot serious. cake? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't even get me But like, I was watching Chopped or something, and they had carrot juice. juice. And I was like, I don't think I've ever had carrot juice. So I tried it. I went and got one at the store. And I was like, this is really good. And I carrot could juice? not get enough carrots. Your body, like, craves it. I it just bought weird. some V8, and I was like, okay, I'll take a gulp. Gulp, 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 gulp. Mm. My body wants this. <laughs> what is this noise that yeah. I hear? All right, about 30 seconds, we'll go back. <coughs> I'm getting so excited for him. What? I'm getting so excited for him. Uh, let me see if I can do this. <coughs> Listen to this one, this is great. Thanks for tuning in. You're listening to Curtain Call. We are on every Sunday from 6 to 8 p.m. here on KSHB 1400 AM. And listen, if you have an iPhone, the best thing to do is to head over to the App Store and download the free KSHP app. And then you can listen live to this show and every show on KSHP. If you're kind of like an avid listener of the auction show throughout the, uh, the week, you can do that as well. And it's free and it's crystal clear and it's pretty much live. I think there's like a... 10 second delay, but you know, whatever. <laughs> whatevs, you know. But, but we're here every Sunday from 6 to 8, and we're talking with people from the community, theatrical productions, directors, actors, things that we want to kind of uh, get the word out about so that we can put yes. more patrons in seats. Because here's the thing you need to go out and get, you need more art in your life, more theater. And so go out and see a show. Let me kind of recap what we were talking about today uh, Summer Camp the Musical. Uh, a new musical, original musical, by Troy Hurd and Angela Chan is now playing over the Onyx Theater. you got one more weekend to check that out. It's next Friday through Sunday, onyxtheater.com for tickets. Um, coming up, um, director Troy Hurd, who is in the studio the first hour, is directing Hamlet. The show times for that is September 7th through the 23rd. And that's an interesting um, interpretation, contemporary version, but still in Shakespearean text with seven actors. It's going to be very interesting and very intimate um, interpretation. That, too, is at the Onyx. Uh, you can go to Onyx onyxtheater.com for that. And then we were talking with Ben just a little bit ago about his upcoming musical that he's directing, Susical the Musical. That's going to be taking place over at the Henderson Pavilion. And those tickets are available right now. HendersonLive.com. And that's September 21st through the 30th. Now, that's... The, and I can't speak highly enough about Susical having directed it myself. Um, I, I was really wanting to audition for that myself, but my schedule didn't permit. So I'm very, very anxiously... Uh, Gonna promote this and, and ask you if guys. If you want to jump on stage during any production, feel free. You know, I might. Just hop on. I just, <laughs> <laughs> what if I like just? We can't. have a spare hat for you if you want. Okay, we're gonna talk. Okay, after we'll, 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 we'll talk. <laughs> but September twenty first through the thirtieth, HendersonLive.com for Susical the musical, 
And then um, Broadway Cares Equity Fights AIDS, uh, AIDS is a uh, organization centered in New York that does amazing work. And unfortunately, not enough uh, companies here in town, uh, you know, give to that as, as much as they should. Um, it's, it's a very, very reputable um, cause that Broadway has kind of latched onto with both claws. And, and I'm thrilled to uh, announce that they're uh, presenting a production of Hair that is going to be taking place at First Friday um, on September 7th. And there's two performances, one at September 7th at 6 p.m., the other later that night at 9 p.m. But there is a special pr uh, presentation of that musical being done at the Hard Rock Cafe, um, the casino, correct? No? Hard Rock? No, the, the Hard Rock Cafe on the Strip. Hard Rock um, Cafe, thank you. Uh, right. Yeah. It's, it's on the third story of the Hard Rock on the Strip, uh, which is across from El Diablo, right down by New York, oh, New yeah. York, yeah, in yeah. that area. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And that's on September 8th. Yeah, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. And um, that's going to be interesting because that's going to be in uh, that environment of all the eclectic different musical, you know, vintage thingies that are hanging on the walls and everything. So that's going to be kind of fun. So you need to check both of these out. The hair production is absolutely free. You need to go. They are going to um, encourage you to maybe think about giving towards this cause. It's a very... Uh, uh, very noble cause. It's, it's something that deserves a little bit more attention, not just money, but more attention. Uh, but the way that you can uh, offer support is by, uh, you know, maybe taking a week off of Starbucks and putting that $20 bill in the hat as it, as it gets passed. Um, so go check out uh, Suzical in here. Um, Andrew Wright wanted me to, um, I'm going to talk okay. about your list. Yes. So okay, yeah, the, the this part? was <clears throat> mentioned, and now that, first of all, I, I just, I love having the, you two in the room together because this is the way we can address this at once. Lightning struck okay. the table right now. <laughs> We would have no coverage. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I mean, I want to say before I get into anything, I want like both your sets of trios, like, thank you guys from our community. Like, you, if it wasn't for your guys' coverage, there's, that's what's keeping people in the know of the auditions of, uh, in a positive light. Like, it's, it's covering everything and making people care and making people know and making people excited. So, that is something that I'm sure neither set of teams is getting thanked enough, but it is very much appreciated. So, thank you. And with that said, um, mentioned on the, the forum that I wanted to do this, we have the wherewithal to do it now, um, and depending on the numbers we can get is which room we're going to be in. Um, let's get, I'm calling out to every group, uh, I don't want this to be like ragtag helps them, I want this to be all of Las Vegas theater, so even like signature, in, in its hiatus, signature people, uh, table eight people, Las Vegas Little Theater people, um, everybody, come out together, contact, um, I want to set, talk with Eric and figure out the best way to coordinate this, contact us, um, we have cooperation through the LVH, which was the Hilton, um, we have room access to the Shimmer Room, or the Big Room, if we have enough people, let's do a variety show, a concert, to raise money, to split 50-50 for the two shows that are, that are what is supporting our community. Because you guys are, you know, driving all over and doing all these things and covering all these things out of your wallets, and that sucks. Wow. So um, I have the resource to be able to get the room, which is nice, so let's do it. Wow, that's fantastic. Um, Thank you very much. My only stipulation is it is a three-on-three -three cage match. That's Ooh, for I'm, cool that. I'm down the for, encore. For, 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 I'm, <laughs> well, I, just, I just want to say real quick for those of, of uh, curtain calls listeners that don't know what Andy's talking about. Mm -hmm. I host uh, another similar show called the Love Tap Show, mm -hmm. Las Vegas theater arts production show. It's an internet only podcast, so that's what he's talking about. Yeah. For those of your <laughs> listeners who don't know, and you can go to our Facebook page. We do have a link. We do have a link to their <laughs> podcast. They do a podcast every week, just like we do uh, a broadcast every week. And what. What I always uh, have hoped to accomplish with this show is to kind of be the sister show to El uh, Love Taps. Kind of, kind of be the, you know, well, I'll be the brother show. I don't want to be the sister show. <laughs> I want to be the sister show. You can be sister show. Okay. But the um, kind of, you know, this is the public radio version of the, of the podcast that you can, that's why we always say you can't curse on the air because this is the public radio version of what right. Love Taps does. And, uh, and, and uh, Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Uh, no, we well. pull no punches. <laughs> well, you know what? What I have to say is that um, when Curtain Call was gone for a significant period, for that period mm -hmm. of time, mm -hmm. there was a void. 
there really was. And we said, well, somebody needs to fill that void. Mm -hmm. And so now we, we team up with the Love Tap show. Yes, it's more irreverent. Yes, it's, it's, it's uh, a you know, little jaw-dropping sometimes, and it's just <laughs> goofy fun. Uh, but I would say it, it appeals a little more to the theater producer and the actor than it does to the audience and theater goer. And that's, okay. that's where we parallel each other. That's, where, that's what the sister-brother... That's what I like about it. Yeah. And, then, and so it's like, if you're an artist listening to this show, kind of getting your information of what's going on in the Valley, you can head over to Love Taps and kind of get the inside scoop on some things. Mm -hmm. If you guys are more of the the uh, the uh, patron base, you can you can just follow this show and then kind of touch on that every now and then just to get uh, more information on something that you've heard about. So it's it's, it's really kind of a cooperative and and uh, Lysander and Ben and, and everybody involved in Love Taps they they're very generous in in their uh, time and energies as well. And and I want to. Um, you know, I, I applaud their efforts, I, and when I first decided to bring this show back, I said, there's two things we need to do. One, I need to make sure I don't do it alone. That was my first mistake, the first go-around, because you you got to partner up and do it. So Carrie Ann and Glenn and, and intern Kelly and intern Cassie, who has now gone on to... Uh, to college, that they've really been instrumental in kind of making this whole thing come to fruition. Um, and I wanted to do it side by side with Love Taps. I did not want to take an audience away from Love Taps. I did not want to try to replace Love Taps. It was more kind of um, to do, hopefully, you know, the public radio audience, what, what could possibly be a missing link in what they're trying to accomplish in their goals. And, and uh, I think I think we uh, complement each other very well. I think so too. And uh, and Andy, I I mean I don't know what to say. I'm kind of like that sounds bloody fantastic. Yes, thank <laughs> I mean you so much. I mean so much. Uh, anything that we can do to make this happen, I'm sure both programs would be happy to mm -hmm. support. I, in any way. I say uh, we do uh, in, in uh, concurrently with that. Yeah. We do the six of us do a live show. I love that. Awesome. Idea. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, I think I think we can make that happen. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. I think Let's I think intern it. Kelly can stand there with a the camera and make it happen. Can I just say this intern Kelly here is studying <laughs> and filming? This is outstanding. <laughs> this is what I am and so texting. impressed with you. Well she's an honor student. I wasn't gonna say there's that. high well, expectations well, here. I have four tests in my first day of school, so <laughs> she was eating something too and I'm, I haven't had dinner, I'm starving, so that was rude. It was a hairsicle. <laughs> <laughs> she was eating a hairsicle. <laughs> Ew. That sounds um, gross. But yeah, I mean, it, like, I want it, I want it to be fun. I want uh, all the groups come together. Let's let's show some love. But we'll we'll bring in yeah. some some guest stars from from the strip mm -hmm. and from showrooms too, and then maybe some put some razzle dazzle with it, and we can have an absolutely great time. And if it's well, the type of thing that shimmer seats up to three fifty, if I, I I say we go for more than that because we can get the big one too. Yeah. But uh, you know, make sure we have it. But That's awesome. Let's and, all and, go out. And I'm speaking for myself, but I I. I I think I can speak for you as well and, and chime in if you need to. The, the reason why we do what we do is, is because, um, for one, we love theater and we love this community. Yes. But, but also, um, there, there's kind of a, a gap in communication about theater mm -hmm. in this community, and we just really want to be able to provide something. Right. I mean, we're both, we work full time, we do our thing during the day, and, and our, our passions um, kind of lie in this, and we, we, this is a way for us to kind of give back and, and, and uh, I mean, you're right. There's a little bit of out of pocket, but at the same time, any anything can help so that we can, you know, get this voice out there because we just want patrons in the seats. Get new we toys for the shows and stuff. Oh, like, yeah. there's all I have sorts a bell. Of stuff. Where's my bell? <laughs> there we go. We could get two bells. <laughs> We can have dueling. That's funny. <laughs> Moving up. We're winding down, aren't we? I think we are. <laughs> well, I want to know who's LV Taps third for the three on three. Oh, it's Max, Max, Max Larn. Yeah. Okay. Okay. He has my stipulation with that is he must wear a Luchador mask. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love to see Max. Well, we even got into this big conversation about how Glenn had this dream that we were doing Joseph as the theme <laughs> oh, was, that was wrestling. Awesome. Yeah, I would love to see that production though. I would. I how would much fun would that be to center, watch? Like a, a wrestler theme musical? Are you kidding me? That'd be hilarious. I want to be the Undertaker. <laughs> no, but that, that sounds great. And and uh, as as this develops, we'll kind of keep you posted. And and uh, it just sounds like a great idea. I appreciate you taking the initiative. Thank you. Man. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we're going to have to wind things up this week. Um, as always, I hope you guys join us every week at Curtain Call. Um, we're, we're here 6 to 8 p.m. on Sundays. You can uh, catch archive footage of every interview we've ever done on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and type in the search Curtain Call with Eric Ball, and we have uh, playlists of all the different interviews we've done in the past. 
Um, there's lots of information on there as well. Our Facebook, head up over to Facebook and, and put in the search bar, Curtain Call with Eric Ball, and like us. We like to be liked. Who doesn't like to be liked? We need more friends. Who? That sounds sad, but it's true. <laughs> it's so true. Please like us. Please like us. Um, you know, you can catch us. Uh, you can catch us on uh, online as well, CurtainCallRadio.com. Um, if you want to be a part of Curtain Call, you have a show you want to promote, or if you uh, would like some tickets to the shows that you hear on Curtain Call, I recommend that you send us an email, curtaincallemail at gmail.com, or you can just call uh, during the week at K-Shop. They have an, uh, you know radio auction throughout the course of the week, and they're constantly giving tickets away to these shows, and you can get tickets here. Or you can just head over uh, to the uh, Facebook page, and we have all the links to all the tickets of the guests that we have on the show. So. Lots of stuff to think about, lots to do. But, but thank you so much for being on the show, guys. I mean, it means a lot that thank you took time. Thank you. I mean, Ben just came right over from the play that he's in right now, yeah. November at Las Vegas Little Theater. One more weekend. Shameless plug. One more weekend. LBLT Studio. Yeah, it's go this see, beautiful. Go, show. This is, I can't wait to go see it. David like, Maddox. We were at shows every night this week, and then I'm here tonight. Uh, also not child friendly. But though. go. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Well, it's about go politics. Of course not. Yeah. No, but it's a David Maddox play in November. It's hilarious. Um, it's done. He, I was saying, he, he said it's done in the round. Actually, the oval. So, uh, so, anyways, it's it's funny. You got to go to lvlt.org if you want to check out that comedy. It's gonna be fun. And I have to say, maybe Glenn is the uh, X factor here, but perhaps we did well. We did not stray tonight. This this was on. <laughs> On Can we just points. put that on record for a second? I will say that, like, Glenn is not here. I oh, love boy. coming. I have so much fun, but I, this is the best we've ever stayed on tap. <laughs> this was fantastic. Yes. I mean, last I, time we talked about I farts, took my medication. Like, child, okay. That keeps me focused. <laughs> I think that's the X factor, your daughter. Okay. Because we were all like going, okay. Bye bye. Okay, good. And we kind of would go, oh. it brought us back. See? Thank I'm very, you for coming I'm today, very glad that. you're here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and she's smiling. With her blue teeth. <laughs> That's great. Well, yeah, thanks so, for joining so us. So bravo for being on task. Uh, well, you I were good. Best. I do my best. And guys, uh, thank you to Chris Scott, our producer, for Glenn Heath and Carrie Ann Parks, intern Kelly Ben Lowy, and Andrew Wright, and Andrew Wright's daughter, who's got blue teeth. We uh, appreciate bye. you tuning in, and thanks. Uh, hope to hope to hear have you here next week, 6 to 8 p.m. Curtain call with Eric Paul. We'll talk to you later. <laughs> Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. All of our listeners are going to wonder, why does she have blue teeth? Why? Poor dental hygiene. Have you seen your tongue? Can you stick it out so you can see it? Excuse me. It's blue. I'm going to wait for Chris to come around and then we'll...